Hey y'all, I'm Tracy. And I'm Gene. Guess what we're doing this weekend? Bees. Second honey harvest of the year and last honey harvest of the year. We're going to see how this goes today. See how much honey we actually have for this second harvest. Yeah, at the propolis. Yesterday we harvested all of the honey and today we are slinging the honey and then when we get through with that we'll be taking the boxes back out to the bees the super boxes putting them back on each hive and they have plenty of time to fill up their boxes and have honey for the winter time we won't be harvesting again this will be our last harvest of the year and the rest will be all for them to get through the winter time We've had a really good year with our honey harvest this year and we're really happy about that. We did lose some bees. We didn't, we didn't catch any swarms this year and we did lose three hives this year to wax moths. So we're down to five hives and we like to run 10 to 12. Next spring, we're gonna have to work on rebuilding our hives back up to at least 10 hives is what we like to do. Right now with Jean working full time and Everything that we have going on, 10 hives is a good manageable number. Anything over 10 and it get, it was a little bit stressful for us. When Gene gets home from work and he says, I got a surprise for you, I never know what it's gonna be. It could be bunny rabbits, it could be cats, it could be a dog, I never know what he's gonna have. This was my surprise the other day. A bunch of baby chicks. A lot of our girls are getting old. We have a few young ones that we got from Jacqueline and Eleanor and Zach at Head Family Farm last spring. But most of our girls are getting old and we're hardly getting any eggs anymore. And it's hurting my feelings to have to buy eggs right now, especially when we're buying chicken feed. So we're just gonna let these girls continue to live out their best life here on the farm. And we're adding some new baby chicks. He got Rhode Island Reds, Wine Dots, Americanas. Um, he got one called Prairie Blue Bell, I think, or Prairie Blue, and it's supposed to lay really pretty blue eggs and some Buff Orpingtons. And then next spring, I hope to get some more Americanas and Wine Dots and Olive Eggers and some specialty breeds from Jacqueline at Head Family Farm next spring. And then we should have more than enough eggs for us and Pop and Mom. And I like to share with my kids and neighbors and, you know, my mom and brother whenever I get to see them. And Jean and I actually eat a lot of eggs. So I'm missing having my fresh farm eggs around here. Just 
giving them some electrolytes and probiotics in their water just to try to keep them healthy. One day, Jean's gonna come home from work and say, hey, I got a surprise for you and it's gonna be a cow. That's what I'm waiting on. Or a sheep, or some more baby goats. Well, we got one egg today. Gonna water my greenhouse here. I've gotta get these plants out of here. It's getting too hot in here for them. But a lot of our fall vegetables have come up chamomile and calendulas, kohlrabis and collards, cauliflower, these are broccolis, more broccoli, kale, more collards. This afternoon, I've got to get a table and set it up outside of the greenhouse and carry these all out and put them on the table because it's just getting too hot in here. And they are cool season vegetables and they're not gonna like it soon. This is my Marengo tree. I'm growing it here in my greenhouse and it hasn't done as well this year as it usually does. It's usually very full in this corner and tall, but it hasn't done that well. And I think it's just because of the heat and the fact that it missed some waterings. So it's all bent over and laid over. I never did tie it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do a pretty big cutting on this and harvest most of this and take it in the house and dry it and turn it into some green, healthy Moringa powder that we add to our smoothies, um, yogurt, oatmeal, salads, everything. You can also eat these fresh and they're pretty good. They have a good little flavor to them. They're good on a salad. The Moringa is called the tree of life because it is so high in nutrients. It is packed full of so many nutrients and health benefits. It is a good one to have in your medicine cabinet. Now it is a tropical plant, so it we grow it as an annual here. It will not grow as a perennial. I've had it come back for three years in a row now here in my greenhouse. So if you have a warmer climate or a greenhouse, it will come back for you and uh, produce for you every year. I usually wouldn't do such a hard pruning on this but it's all bent over you know it's not looking too good so i'm just going to give it a good prune in here and it'll flush back out we still have plenty of time to get another harvest off of this i have a few videos on moringa telling you all about it all the benefits of it how to grow it and how to dry it how to preserve it if you want to know more about this miracle plant I will link all of those videos in this video description. This is the Moringa that we just harvested and I sprayed it off a little bit earlier this morning while it was in the ground in the greenhouse and let it dry on its own out there before I harvested it. And um, then when I harvested it and was bringing it in, I shook it really hard outside just to kind of try and make sure all the bugs were off of it because I wanted I didn't want to wash it when I got inside I wanted it to be super dry and ready for me to dehydrate so I'm just stripping off the leaves putting it on my dehydrating trays and I'll put it in my dehydrator it doesn't take long at all I dehydrate it on the lowest setting the herb setting of my dehydrator which is like um, a hundred.
these are completely dry, then I'll take them and put them in a coffee grinder. I have one that I'd use just for herbs. You just grind it up really fine into this beautiful green powder. And this is so packed full of nutrients and health benefits. And then we take this and we sprinkle it on our oatmeal, on our yogurt, um, put it in our smoothies, put it in salads. Any way that we can, we add this to our food, whatever we're eating. And at least once a day, we're getting a serving of Moringa in something that we're eating. You can also purchase off Amazon or Bulk Apothecary or different places like that. These little vegan capsules, I actually got these from Young Living, but you know, they're just little capsules and you can fill these up with this Moringa powder and create your own supplements. Like I said earlier, I have a few videos that I've created in the past all about Moringa, all about how to grow it, its benefits, how to preserve it, how to use it, and I will put those in the description below. Sling and honey and shell and black beans. We didn't get very much, but better than not any. Uh, this is our grandbaby's favorite bean, black beans. So I grew him a little bit. He's coming next week. So we might have enough for him to eat while he's here. <laughs> Game day. Game day, yeah. Florida and uh, Georgia Tech plays today. Okay. Yeah, it's darker, honey. Mm -hmm. Good morning, y'all. I am headed to Petals from the Past today to meet Zoe with Chestnut Hills Farm and to meet Jacqueline with Head Family Farm. And we are going to be planning and organizing the Great Fall Garden Festival event that we are holding on September the 14th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Petals from the Past in Jimison, Alabama. And we're hoping to see so many of you there and get to meet y'all. But today is all about planning this event, trying to get everything organized so that we can have an awesome event this year. This is our second one and I'm super excited about it. Plus, I always love to go to Petals from the Past. It is my favorite, favorite nursery in the world. 
Um, I work, if you don't know and you're new to our channel, I worked there for over 12 years as a garden designer, retail, uh, I did everything. Whatever needed to be done, I did it. But primarily I did the displays in the uh, shop and outside in the garden, the garden displays. And uh, I did design plans for customers that came in and just did everything. If the toilets need scrubbing, that's what I did. I did whatever needed to be done for 12 years. And I loved, loved, loved working there. I love everybody there. They're like my family and I loved my job and I loved the people that I got to help. And the only reason that I quit working there was because we bought our farm and moved over an hour away and the commute just was not, you know, it just wasn't feasible anymore. And honestly, I just didn't want to leave my farm. I didn't want to leave there every day. I wanted to be there and build our farm and build our business. Just to give you a little bit of a backstory for those of you who are new to our channel. I don't know how today's going to go. I know it's going to be really busy with planning and organizing all the details of the event. And I've got some filming to do. So I'm hoping I'm going to be able to walk y'all around the nursery a little bit. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Jean and I were busy all weekend on the honey harvest. It takes quite a few days to get that done. It takes a full day to harvest it all. It takes a full day to sling it all and, and go put the boxes back on the hives. And it takes a day, at least a full day, to clean up all of the mess. My kitchen is usually sticky from the front door to the back door and it takes a lot to clean all of that up. It's in our plan to build an outdoor kitchen. We're gonna build a carport with an outdoor kitchen like on the carport. And when we get that done, oh, this is gonna be so much easier. But until then, we use what we have, which is our kitchen and our home. And it makes a giant mess. So it takes at least a full day, sometimes two days to clean everything up and get all the sticky out of there. We ended up with 18 gallons of honey this second harvest, which is 216 pounds. Last harvest, which was in May, we ended up with 28 gallons of honey. So we've had a really good honey harvest this year. We're really pleased with it. Despite the fact that we lost quite a few hives, we didn't catch any swarms this year, and now we're down to five hives. We've still had a really good honey harvest this year for us, and we're super excited about that. So we've got some honey that will be for sale. I know a lot of you have been wanting our honey. We've got some that's gonna be for sale at the event and we'll be able to launch our store that we're opening up on our website with honey being our first product. It won't be long. We're hoping by the end of fall that we'll have our store opened and we'll have honey for sale available for any of you who would like to support us and purchase it. So exciting things happening at Just Dig It Farms and we appreciate you all so, so much for being a part of our community and for always supporting us. And if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, y'all please go subscribe, like, comment and share this bit share our videos with any of your friends or family who you think might enjoy them jean and i cannot thank y'all enough for all of your love and your support and for joining us on our journey and being a part of our lives hey y'all zoe and jacqueline and pat which is the event coordinator here at petals from the past and jason the owner of petals from the past we just had our meeting We've got everything organized. We've got the details organized. So it's gonna be an awesome event, y'all. I sure hope you can come.
This is the little protege garden here at Petals. They grow some different vegetables out here and this was one of the highlights of working summertime at Petals is we could just come out here and pick us a tomato, have a tomato sandwich, cucumber, whatever, and have our lunch right out of the garden. Right now they've got these tarps down to kill off weeds. Probably getting ready to do a cover crop. This grape here on this little pergola is Foxy Lottie. Awesome grape. I know you've heard me and Jason at Cog Hill talk about this grape a lot. It's a native grape to Alabama and it's a good one to grow here in the South. Isn't this beautiful though? What a nice shady spot to see it in this heat. And this is the shop here at Petals, the back of the shop. And most all of these right here are roses, antique roses. This is the herb section where all of the wonderful herbs are. Look at this plant. This is called Turk's Cap. It is an herb. Butterflies, hummingbirds love that. I planted one of these in the protege garden this spring, but mine's pink. Mine has pink blooms. Greenhouse here mostly houses house plants, and my daughter-in-law is looking for a Chinese money plant. So I'm gonna go in here and see if I can find her one. Well, no Chinese money plant in here, but I'm gonna see if they find one, if they can order us one. There's many of you who have never been to Petals from the Past, and you're not gonna get to come to our event because I know some of you are a really long ways away. So I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit of Petals. This nursery is amazing. And all behind the retail here is fruit orchards. So they grow tons of different fruit out here and everything that they grow in the orchards they sell and do classes on how to grow fruit in the south. And that's one of the classes that's gonna be taught at this event. Dr. Arlie Powell is teaching a class on how to grow fruit in the south. Look at this tree. This is one of my favorite trees out here. It's a vitex or a lilac chase tree got the neatest form. The blooms in the summertime look like a butterfly bush. All of that out there beyond this pavilion is the retail fruit section where you can buy the fruit trees. These are shade-loving shrubs and perennials in here, like hostas and ferns, hydrangeas.
This isn't even a fraction of this beautiful garden nursery and farm, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of it. I've got to get on the road. I have to go to the co-op, go to the grocery store. I have to get prepared for my grandbabies coming this weekend. Ready to feed the feed the animals, huh? You hiding under there? Yeah, come here, kitty. Yeah, there you are. Let's go feed them babies. Hmm. Go feed them. Mm, yeah. It's time to feed them. Our rabbits and goats love these organic animal crackers. They love snacking on them. So we're gonna go over here 
and feed the animals. Oh, and we just had a, a rain and check out our rainbow. Just dig it. Woohoo! Hey girls, what are y'all doing in there? Y'all hungry? Huh? You hungry? Let's give you some animal crackers. Y'all want some? Hmm? You ready? Yeah. Oh, dropped it. There you go. Get you. Y'all like those, don't you? Don't fight over them. Hey, you want some milk for them? Dip them cookies in milk. Rosemary. Let peace have some. Chump, 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 chump. That's good, ain't it? You want a cookie? There you go, cookies. Oh, cookies, buddy. He likes. He loves these animal crackers. How's that taste? Does it taste good? Less filling? Hmm. I know it. Those are good. Hey, Cinnamon. You took it. You took it and ran. You took it and ran. What are you doing, girl? Huh? That's good, ain't it? I love these automatic waters. We just fill this up with water every now and then. Put apple cider vinegar in it. And it's got a valve and it's just splitting off to both cages. It's a lot easier maintenance and it keeps the water clean. What's up, Joseph? How you doing, buddy? Did you like that rain? It cooled things off, didn't it? We've been saving our shavings from the rabbits and all their poo makes excellent fertilizer. So we've got these totes ready to go to the garden. Well, they're already done eating. What y'all doing, resting? Hmm? Y'all taking a snooze? Huh? You taking a snooze? What are you doing, Basie? You watching? Are you supervising me? Hey girls, we got some broody hens. You purring? You purring? You waiting on your chance to get in the nest? Okay. Let's get y'all some food. You gotta love it. We got us some eggs. But now it's time to feed the goats. What's up, Era? You ready for some food, buddy? Hey, Clyde. Let's eat, babies. And here they come. Here they come. Come on, fatties. <laughs> come on. Come on, let's eat. Let's eat. Look at Chloe. Girl, you need to get on a diet. <laughs> you need on a diet. What are y'all doing? Y'all ready to eat? Huh? You ready to get down? What's going on, Bobo? Y'all save some. I think Chloe may be pregnant. <laughs> hey, Domino. Where are you going? <laughs> Get him, Chloe. Domino, you got to, there's your bowl. Yeah. Tracy just got here with all the food and hay we got to load it up what's going on yee -hee. I just found two. hey Chloe
I just got home. It is almost seven o'clock. It has been a long day today. Our little plant babies are doing good. So I got a surprising phone call when I was on my way home from my son Chance. Uh, they were coming down this weekend to spend Labor Day weekend with us. And we're babysitting our grandson for the first time ever that he's been left without his mom and dad. They are going to an Alabama football game this weekend. And we're going to be keeping Cooper Saturday. And they were coming just for the weekend and going home on Labor Day. And they called and asked, could they come on and come tonight? So, uh... Hey, Daisy. Hey, Daisy. Somebody's happy to see me, huh? Are you happy to see me, girl? <laughs> so of course, I'm going to say yes. Come on. So, I just got home, and I've got a lot to do before they get here. So, we're going to close out this video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this weekend and today, and we hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you. We'll see y'all next week.